what is secular equilibrium in radioactive decay chains? The word secular means either non-religious or continuing through the ages for a very long time. The second meaning applies in this case. The word equilibrium means a state of balance in which no net change occurs over time. Before we go on, let's review some terminology. A nuclide is a specific element with a specific mass number. For example, inside the box, we have five different nuclides, but only three different elements, uranium, radium, and lead. And we have two pairs of isotopes, for example, U-238 and U-235, which are different nuclides of the same element. Here's a picture of a natural rock containing uranium. Let's assume the rock contains one gram of U-238. We'll ignore the tiny amount of U-235 for now. U-238 decays at a rate of 12,000 atoms per second into thorium-234, which in turn decays at the same rate into protactinium-234, which in turn decays at the same rate into U-234, and so on in a long chain, ending with lead-206. Each blue arrow represents a decay rate of 12,000 atoms per second. The decay chain is in a state of secular equilibrium. The nuclides in this rock all have different half-lives and exist in different amounts. So why do they all decay at the same rate? Let's look at a model that makes this easier to understand. Here's a model of a radioactive material, a bucket with a little hole at the bottom. Water leaks out at a rate proportional to the amount of water in the bucket. 10 drops per second when the bucket is 100% full, 5 drops per second when 50% full, 1 drop per second when 10% full, and so on. The bucket empties at a non-constant rate. If you fill the bucket to the 40% level, it starts leaking at a rate of 4 drops per second. An hour later, it has dropped to the 20% level, but now it's leaking only half as fast, two drops per second. After another hour, it falls to the 10% level, and now it's leaking at just one drop per second, and so on. We say that the bucket has a half-life of one hour because the amount of water falls to one half of its previous level as each hour goes by. Uranium-238 has an extremely long half-life, so it's like a city's huge water tank with a very small hole at the bottom, leaking at the rate of four drops per second. Because the water tank is so large, we can consider the drip rate to be constant over a very long period of time. If uranium-238 is like a city water tank, then its immediate decay product, thorium-234, is like a bucket. What happens if you start out with one gram of absolutely pure U-238? It's like putting a bucket under the city's water tank. At first, the bucket collects water at a rate of four drops per second. After one hour, the bucket is 20% full, but now it's losing two drops per second out the bottom as it gains four drops per second from above for a net gain of two drops per second. After another hour, the bucket is 30% full, but now it's losing three drops per second as it's gaining four drops per second for a net gain of one drop per second and so on. Eventually, the bucket reaches equilibrium with the city water tank, with the gain and loss rates exactly balanced at four drops per second. A decay chain is a sequence of containers of various sizes, ranging from thimbles that drain out almost instantly to railroad tanker cars that take a very long time to fill up. Each container, no matter what size, eventually accumulates water to a level such that the rate dripping out equals the rate dripping in, and this is equal to the original rate, four drops per second. When all the containers reach their own equilibrium levels, the whole chain is in equilibrium. I've only shown the first few containers here. There are 14 containers in all beneath the water tank. In the next video, 
we'll see how the equilibrium amount of water in each container is related to the container's half-life. From this, you can determine the exact amount of each nuclei that exists in the uranium-bearing rock sample. Also, we'll look at what happens when you extract the uranium from the rock, which disturbs the equilibrium.